This is, this is, this is. Welcome to it. Thanks for pushing play. It's the last day of September. I just went and saw Green Day. It was an excellent show. I had a great time. Billy Joe was not asleep. He was awake. It was in September. All right, you get it. All right. Thanks for joining us. This episode's called Bob because we got a new plant, a new studio plant. My wife got me this. I had been just mentioning a while back that I wanted to get a plant for the studio. And so she got me this. Thank you, Holly. Appreciate that. So cool. So the kids named it Bob. I did not name the plant Bob. So Bob, the producer Bob, can't blame me. All right. So so uh, this is Bob's first day in studio. We'll see how he does. All right. Chill out, Bob. We're going to do this podcast. Um, voicemails abound on this podcast. We'll just We'll just get in, get dirty, get it done. Before we do that, MXPX is coming to Texas. They just went on sale. Uh, MXPX is coming to Texas and Chicago. So first with Texas, uh, just went on sale. A lot of hype. Houston House of Blues and Dallas House of Blues. That's the be- Basically, it's a New Year's Eve party. It's January 3rd, Friday night, January 4th, Saturday night. Tickets on sale right now, MXPX.com. And before the end of the year, this is coming so close. Chicago, two nights back-to-back at Metro. It's going to be amazing. MX Peaks and the Ataris, we're doing two different sets. Kind of like what we did in Bremerton, except for the Ataris are actually going to show up this time. Hmm. 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 Uh, It's going to happen, (laughs) y'all. I don't even want to talk about it. (laughs) Come to Chicago. It's going to be amazing. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. All right. MXPeaks.com. We have new merch. We have koozies. We have hoodies. The new hoodie is people are really loving that. Uh, We have this uh, Let's Ride t-shirt that people are loving. A bunch of new other t-shirt designs you got to check out. Um, This this Crest t-shirt. It's got this turquoise blue. It's really great. Really pops. Um, Anyway. Now that we're done with that, I appreciate you guys because this is what we do. I love it. I love uh, making things. I love coming up with ideas and seeing it actually happen. So when you guys are are listening to the music, it really just inspires me to just keep going harder. So appreciate you guys. All right, let's get to these voicemails. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Here we go. Okay. Hey, Mike. Uh, Chris from New York. Uh, I figured I'd change it up, not really ask a question, but, uh, I guess ask a question. Uh, what, uh, I say, what would be the coolest thing you've ever done for a fan? And what is the coolest thing a band has ever done for you? Um, I think one of the coolest things, uh, that was ever done for me was, uh, I went with my friends or my band to go see A Day to Remember in Paramus, New Jersey at the School of Rock. And uh, we showed up to the venue, hoping to get tickets, but it was sold out. As we were leaving, we actually walked past A Day to Remember, and the bass player, Josh, uh, came over to us and asked us where we were going. We told him we went to, you know, we told him we couldn't uh, go to the show because it was sold out, and uh, we were really there to see them. And, uh, Josh told us to come hang out with them at the van and, uh, every band member gave us their wristbands to get into the venue. And, uh, we just walked into the backstage with them technically, uh, to get into the venue and they just got us in for free. <laughs> I thought that was one of the coolest things, uh, a band has ever done. Uh, they weren't that big back then. I guess they just had come out with homesick. I felt like that was their breakthrough album, but, uh, I really appreciate, you know, what they did and it was just like a really cool thing uh they were just genuine people uh which is awesome to see uh but uh, i just wanted to share that and also you know ask those questions thanks mike hey chris thanks for the call yeah coolest things we've done um we've done stuff like that i mean definitely many times over the years um letting fans in for free putting people on the guest list because it's sold out we did that as early as um I want to say 1997, when we realized there was a guest list. It took us a while. We we were touring, uh, we started touring in 1995, and we really just, for for the most part, 
started touring and never stopped. We did come home for a couple weeks and months here and there, but you know, once we started touring, it was just always touring. We slowly learned the ropes. Um, other things we've done for fans, nothing real big. I mean, we haven't we haven't really been able to Oprah anybody, um, meaning uh, give them a car or you know, like here you go, here's a car. I've given a fan a, a free bass guitar that I wasn't even planning on doing. It wasn't like okay, we're gonna give somebody this bass guitar. This is the bass guitar. No, I had a wild hair one day. It was um, it was uh, it was. California, it was um, not San Bernardino, it was North California, it was like middle, like Bakersfield, California, like somewhere in there, Fresno, Bakersfield, um, we were playing this huge show, and I just, somebody wanted my bass, they're like, can I have your bass, and I was like, sure, <laughs> and I brought them on stage, and I gave them my bass, um, that's probably one of the coolest things that, that I've done, especially it not being planned. Um, another cool thing was um, we've we've allowed fans to come up and and propose to their. It's usually it's so far it's been a guy proposing to a girl, um, but so far it's been good. You know, the, all, all yeses. Not all of them have ended in uh, divorces yet, but uh, a few have. Um, <laughs> I don't think it had anything to do with us. Um, one of the the notable ones was in Seattle. Uh, a fan from uh, from Arizona actually came up and proposed to his wife. And not only did he do that, it wasn't on stage. It was before the show, out in Pioneer Square, Seattle, in the park area. And he was just hanging out with him and his family and his wife, his soon to be wife, soon to be fiance there. Uh, they're just hanging out, and the plan was I kind of walk up and start playing acoustic guitar, and I start singing this song, and she's like, what? And then at the, at the end of the song, he gets down on one knee and proposes. So that's what happens. You know, we had, we had it uh, filmed and, and photographed, and uh, I walk up, and I start playing, and I'm playing, playing Quit Your Life, I think. So, yeah, that, that was, uh, and that's just something we just did. You know, it wasn't like he, we didn't charge him for that, you know, like, um, it's not, it's not like we can do that all the time because it, it does take up a lot of brain power and a little planning and, uh, but, but it was so much fun. I'm really, I'm really glad to, to be part of that story. That's what's so cool. And there's been a couple things like that, a couple different things, um, free merch, you know, like easy stuff too. But anyway, great question. I'm um, glad you had a great experience with the data. Remember, I've, I've, uh, I don't know that I've actually met them. Um, I think I've met a couple of the guys, but I haven't met Jeremy. Like I've always, it's, we've always just missed each other. Like I've invited him to shows. He hasn't come out. Um, I, uh, I mean, probably because he's on tour. Uh, but I know Jeremy McKinnon's a, a fan. Um, but you know, it's just, we just haven't been in the same room. So, I'm sure those guys are awesome um james barrett leprechaun who used to play he used to be our bass tech my bass tech uh and drum tech he used to work for them as well and so like he's like yeah they they talk about you guys like they love you so um but yeah i went to warped was it warped or something like that to go meet up with them and then i ended up going somewhere else and doing something you know it just didn't work out Anyway, <clears throat> great question. Let's move on. Let's get to number two. Mike, it's Frank again from right. Florida. I'm not going to do the uh, uh, lightning round uh, <laughs> with regards to just a multitude of questions, but just two questions. Number one is, if I'm not mistaken, I believe now you guys are playing in um, E-flat, or you tuned that half step down. I, I was wondering when... When did that occur specifically? Uh, I know vocally, I'm sure that's that's easier, but if you could take me just a little bit of an insight as to when did that occur uh, and what's your overall you know, thought on the older songs, which are in standard to me, number one. Second question is, do you ever look back to the early days of MXPX 
early 90s, kind of into the late 90s, and figure how did you guys fit all that production and output in in that time frame? Now, as a parent looking back and seeing how fragile and precious time is, do you ever sit back and realize and be like, wow, we just went nonstop and, and didn't sleep? And is that really then what happened? Of course, this is a pre-social media and in the early days of Internet, so all that wasn't really tracked. But if you kind of give us an insight, too, as to what that was like back then, being so young and just doing so much, um, I'm always just curious with mm. artists uh, as to what that was like. All right, Mike, be well. Regards to the family. Bye. Thanks, Frank. I um, hope Florida is good. Um, so I'll start with this one, and then I'll work my way back into the tuning. Uh, early days, MXPX, we... We weren't really thinking about it the way people think about it now. You know, marketing wasn't marketing. I didn't know anything about all that. All I knew was you have to tell people and communicate to people that you're doing a show for them to come to the show. And our motivation was we want to play for people. We want people to hear these, this music. Um, I don't know what the compulsion is, you know, that humans have to, to perform, you know, like, a lot of people have kids and, and, and think about your kids like even if they're not uh, even if they're not singers or performers or, or artists like th in, in the traditional sense of the word, most kids like to tell you something, tell you a story, show you what they did, what they made. Hey, daddy, mommy, look what I made here. It was no different for us. I think we had that infantile drive and, and speaking to the production uh volume in a short amount of time that's just kind of how it was back then things didn't take as long people weren't so wrapped up there was no internet it was just like we just this is what we're working on and so we just did it and you didn't have the distractions you have today um when things happened they happened so you know when we got we got into the studio because Aaron Sprinkle, you know, got our demo, which was a garage demo. He's like, this is, this is cool. I like you guys. I want to, I want to record, you know, a real recording. And then just from there, you just keep going. We weren't really sitting back and analyzing how does this sound? Not at all. We were, we were, we thought, oh man, this sounds raw. This sounds energetic. This sounds great. Now, if we would have like listened to it over and over and like, let's, Let's pick out some flaws. Let's look, look for something to change. We would have found a lot. Uh, didn't do any of that back in those days. Um, now everyone's obsessed with being perfect and having a perfect output. It's just not going to happen. And MXPX is obsessed with it too. It's the same way as most people. Uh, but I, I realize, you know, at some point, hey, the song's done. Let's just this is this is what it's going to be. <laughs> but uh, back in those days, we we just made the thing and kept moving forward we did the show and we kept moving forward we didn't think so much about how's the set gonna be and this, uh, you know, we, we thought about the set but not for the same reasons why th people think about things today um you know we had branding we had the poking at your punk we knew we we knew it was important to have a mascot to have a logo that people could recognize the band without even seeing our faces. We knew that somehow intrinsically in there, but we didn't really think about it and we didn't internalize it in the same way people do today with marketing, with branding, with building a company that wasn't on the horizon at all. We weren't going, okay, someday we're going to have this merch company be even bigger. We're going to sell vinyl out of our store we're going to sell all these hoodies and t-shirts for us it was just we're on tour we're at home sending out these cassette tapes and stickers and t-shirts but i didn't think about the future at all it was just this is what we're doing now and you didn't have time or distraction to think about anything else you're just boom we got to get this done boom 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 and and that's what life was like back then um in the early days of mxpx not a lot of thought went, in, went into everything. We got lucky because we just had that tr intrinsic thought of it's important to have a logo. It's important to have a branding that people can look back and go, this is MXPX. Boom. And I think something that, that really cemented that after we had already done it was seeing a sick of it all dragon tattoo on Gary, our merch guy. Back in the day, Gary, our merch guy, he 
he became our merch guy because he was just a fan and he was hanging out and this this is early days you know you just people that are around you just all right come on let's go um he had a tattoo on his leg and like sick of it all right and he's like yeah this is my favorite band sick of it all i love sick of it all by the way lou send out my love to you uh he's got some health issues right now and and uh i just hope hope you're doing the best my friend uh love you lou he's been on the podcast so we love sick of it all we love lou uh we hope the best for you all right uh if anybody can support what he's doing there's a gofundme uh on their account so go check it out uh so anyway sick of it all he uh, you know my boy gary he's like this is my this is my band and as he would go along it was funny because now and again somebody would be like dude that's an awesome tattoo uh and he's like yeah sick of it all uh but one time he found a guy that had the same tattoo another sick of it all tattoo the dragon and he goes up to him he's like dude you got the, you got hey we're you know and the guy's like yeah man dragon tattoo he didn't and and gary goes sick of it all and the guy's like what <laughs> <laughs> like the guy just thought it was a cool tattoo so i'm sure that exists with poking at your punk tattoos somebody probably was like dude i want to get that guy that guy's cool but they don't know who mxpx is by the way here's my if you're watching on youtube here's my poking at your punk tattoo it's on my right arm upper right arm one of the first ones i ever got uh still looks good it's uh it's just it's classic um so so anyway, you know, back in those days, we we made some decisions that really have turned out great for us. And one of those was the Poking at Your Punk. Um, so shout out to John Nissen for, for working with us because we actually sent him back for like, hey, the first round, I'll tell like a, an abbreviated story because uh, I've told it before, but the first round was way too mean, way too punk, way too adult. Because uh, we, we told him we want like a punker kind of like running or moshing and he came up with like a circle jerk style kind of guy, like a skinhead. And we're like, no, make it more cartoon, more fun, more young. And he came up with the poking at your punk. And it was just like, boom, that's it. That's it. We're done. Put your pencil down. <laughs> and uh, yeah, ever since, that's been a huge, huge asset for MXPX. And, and I, I don't even mean to make it in a business sense. Honestly, it's it's uh, it's something that, that honestly has changed our, our whole entire lives so thank you for being part of uh part of the mxpx family and if you're part of the fan club a pxpx member poking at your punks um you mean a lot so thank you and it doesn't take much to do that actually but i'm gonna stop on that let's get on to the next one the next subject of your question which is the tuning um so yeah we started we started tuning down I don't know what year exactly, but probably 2015, 2016. It was right after Tumble Down because Tumble Down was regular tuning for A440, you call it, or I call it, or most people call it, A440. And after that, uh, I started writing again with, you know, MXPX. We did Plans Within Plans. I think we released that in 2014. Um, and after that, just touring around was when we started tuning down. It wasn't the, wasn't the albums. The first time we ever tuned down an album was 2018 self-titled, but we had been playing live half step tuned down. Yeah. Since like 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. And the reason for that is, is honestly my voice, <laughs> my voice keeps getting deeper, getting more mature as the years go on. Um, some of those parts were a little high back then. And so I would rather not strain so much. It's, it's crazy because the descendants have some songs like when I get the time, if you sing that really have Milo singing it, it is so high. And I'm just like, how is Milo singing that high? And so for me, uh, I'm okay. Like once your once your ear is attuned to a new note, it's fine. Like it doesn't really, like if you go too far down, it really messes with the song. But if you're only a half step, you really can't tell. You really can't tell. Um, so we just started doing that and we just feel more comfortable. Um, and it's, and since we were doing that live, we figured, 
well, we might as well just start writing new songs in that same tuning. And then, um, and then it becomes not really a detuning. It's just that's the song is now in the shape of a D, but the actual note of a D flat, something like that. You know, like that's, that's the sentiment that, that I'm going with, but <clears throat> I really like it. Honestly, I think it fits what we do really well. And especially new era MXPX, but the, the, the old songs just sound, uh, you know, they sound fine. They sound great. Um, if we can pull off playing, you know, any of those old songs live, like remembering them, um, the last thing I'm really thinking about is, is the pitch. But um, with, the, with tuning a half step down, I have to think about it even less. So for me, it's just, you know, it's less stressful. Um, and, and I really have just gotten used to it. And, and I do, now I tune down all my acoustic stuff as well. Um, so when I'm playing my Takamini, that's, that's half step down, E flat. Um, but a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of bands have different tunings than just standard A440. Um, Good Charlotte tunes down past us. I think they're like um, D, something like that, um, which is, well, maybe they're not D. Maybe they're, yeah, maybe they're G. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, what you call the different tunings, but A440 down to G. Uh, but I, I think technically I call the tuning like an E flat tuning or a half step down tuning. And then since my first string isn't a B, I don't, I don't play a five string bass. I play a four string bass. So my first string is an E. If you're counting from the low E, um, I know technically you're supposed to count from the high E on a guitar, like one, two, three, four, five, six. But on a bass, I, I don't know. I just, my first string for me is the low E. So that's what I kind of talk about tuning with. So E, E flat, where's, where is it from there? D. So that's why I think Good Charlotte would be tuned to D. It would be tuning down a whole step. Uh, there's a lot of bands, like a lot of metal bands, tuned down to like drop C, which is tuning your whole guitar down to like a D and then you go and then your low note is to a C it's wild but you know it just keeps going it keeps going heavier and sludgier and filthier and for us it's all it's it's just it's all about the vocal you know for me I, I'm, I'm gonna admit it you know I, I can't sing as high as I really couldn't ever sing as high as I thought I could I just realized, why am I straining so much? Why am I trying so hard? And when I started writing songs within the range of my vocal, it made all the difference in the world. Like when I write a song, sometimes I'll start out too high and I write the, because that's the idea. And then I bring it down to a reasonable pitch and all of a sudden I can breathe and I can sing and I can make it, you know, make it happen. So that's, it's all about finding where you feel comfortable and, and i'm not saying you shouldn't strain yourself or well strain yourself is a weird word for vocal but you don't want to strain your vocal but uh i'm not saying you shouldn't push yourself to do things that are hard of course you should yes i've been doing this a long time and i know okay if i'm 50 minutes into a set and i'm doing this song that's super high is that gonna you know be something i want to do so I, I don't know. It's too much inside baseball. Um, <laughs> come see me do it live. Uh, <laughs> let's get to uh, another question. Hey, Mike, this is Jeff from Tacoma. Just want to let you know that saw your show at the Tacoma Airport Tavern. And man, what an absolute great way to open up the new venue for Dano and Jessica at the Airport Tavern. Really great night. Mike. Yeah. Anyways, just wanted to say I really like your band, Mike. Met you a few times. Um, really glad to know that you were the ones that Dano picked to have the grand opening of the airport chat. What a great night. Just want to say thank you again from a fellow Tacoma resident. Looking forward to a new venue in Tacoma. And that was a blast. Thanks, Mike. 
Dude, thanks for the call, Jeff. I appreciate it. Tacoma was so much fun. Um, Airport Tavern's got a really cool space. Great, great sound. Um, we uh, we don't usually get to play venues that small, you know. So it's just got that. It's got a smaller vibe to it, which was really fun. Really enjoyed any, you know, no matter where you are in the room, you can see. Unless you're in the back. Because you can't see in the back. What I mean is backstage, because <laughs> then you're seeing a, a banner. But anywhere else in the front of the stage, you can see it was a, it was great. Anyway, uh, the Drowns opened the show. They kick so much ass. They're so much fun. Um, Nick Newsham from uh, Gatsby's American Dream came up and sang on "Stay Up All Night." He's awesome. Got great vocals. Good friend of the band. Um, Anyway, Tacoma. Tacoma was awesome. Thanks, Dano. Thanks for having us. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying some other shows there. I don't know. I haven't, uh, I haven't been out there again yet, uh, but I, I figure um, when the right band comes around, I'll, I'll make my way back and, and see a show and not just do a show. All right. Um, let's get to uh, another voicemail. Let's go. Hey, Mike. Brian from California, longtime fan. Out here sitting on the beach here in sunny San Diego, and I got to thinking as I'm listening to MXPX on uh, my iPod, you know, mix. I think it's time that MXPX puts out a nothing but hardcore songs. <laughs> you know, you guys have some bangers on every album. Have you ever thought about just making one album that's just nothing but good, fresh, hardcore punk? Love everything you guys do. You have a great day. Thank you. Yes, dude. Brian, what's up, man? I hope San Diego is good. Uh, always is for us. We love it down there. Sunny San Diego. Um, stay classy. You know what's funny you mentioned that is I was just talking to Tom Chichilla, who's like uh, our manager type guy. Um, we, were, we were talking about how fun it would be to do a hardcore album. Yeah, hardcore punk hardcore metal like more on the like breakdowns and and more screaming more fist versus tact more you know more just more of what we've done uh more rage you know ready to rage melodic still melodic too you know like we've definitely talked about that uh recently and it's something that yeah maybe we'll do maybe we should uh kickstart it or something you know so so if people are actually into it, we know that they want it rather than think that somebody will, you know, Brian wants it. But uh, if everybody else wants something like that, then it's something we absolutely would love to do as almost like a hobby. It would be like just a, like a little sidebar MXPX hardcore, you know. Um, great idea. And I'm glad that we had it before you. But <laughs> really great idea, Brian. Yeah, we've been talking about it ever since uh, we, we were hanging out with Toby from H2O. Um, we just love H2O. We love the melodic hardcore sound. And, and H2O wasn't as, as popular when they first started because it was melodic. They got a lot of flack for that. But it's aged really nicely. They have so many great songs. And, and that was sort of like, yeah, man, that... I love just putting on H2O with the kids because it's so positive. It's so fun. And and getting into hate breed recently, realizing that they're not all that negative. They actually have a lot of positive lyrics, even though it sounds negative. It's so heavy and so dark. Um, I can't say that we, we haven't been daydreaming a little bit about being a little hardcore band. Um, we're going to stay punk, of course. But uh, it's fun to dabble into some of that harder stuff. All right. Um, what's next? Let's get into let's get into one more. Hey man, you reposted me the other day at uh, Hinge Festival. I said, love this guy. Thanks, that meant a lot. Especially when everybody in Birmingham wants me to kill myself. I'm tired of playing this game, bro. I know we're all playing the game, and everybody caps from time to time. I know we're all in entertainment, whatever. This is Dan KX and G and the Plastic Pink Elephants Collective. Please stream The Moon Made Us Gay by Dan KX and G and the Plastic Pink Elephants Collective. Plastic Pink you Elephants. Won't. And they'll say you did and they'll listen to like Say Less or something to say or something. Okay. It's an hour. It's, it's an hour and 47 minutes and mine's retarded. No, I I'm not going to listen. anymore, but you are so retarded. I must be retarded too. West. Okay. Can't believe this. 
I'm still in love with you. This is Friday. full three minutes. I write good music too, don't make no difference. I'm gonna change that. I understand. I don't know you. I was listening to Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo Record the other day. Yeah, that you don't know. Do you have the your you don't know me song? Excuse I get it. Me, I really do get it more than you realize now. All right, that was a full three minutes, and then it just cut off, or it just cut off. Um, Dan K something in the plastic mannequin. All right, uh, pink plastic man. Okay, obviously, guy went a little crazy. Uh, that's cool. I played it. He didn't think I'd play it. I played it. Um, I don't know what the question was. So I feel like it's kind of uh, weird to end on this, <laughs> this one. But that's all I got right now because I didn't download anymore. Um, but if you want to call in, please do a better job than this guy. Let him be a lesson to us all. Uh, the number is 360-830-6660. If you have a question, if you have a topic, if you have need of any kind, please call in, leave me a voicemail. would love to play it on the podcast and then talk about it. Um, it really is a fun aspect of what we do here at the podcast. I am going to have more guests on coming up. Um, we have MXPX shows. Next up is October 4th. That's a Friday night with no effects and Dropkick Murphys and a bunch of great bands. It's in San Pedro, California. That's the Los Angeles area. Come on out, see us. Come cheer us on. If you're in the crowd, don't miss MXPX. We need all the love we can get at all times because we we need it. We crave it. But uh, would love to see you out there. And then MXPX in Chicago, back to back, December 13th and 14th. That's a Friday the 13th, y'all. So I know it won't be Halloween. It'll be Christmas, Friday the 13th in December, and then Saturday the 14th in December. At Metro, MXPX and the Ataris. Tickets on sale right now. Go to MXPX.com to get those links. Texas, House of Blues Houston, that's Friday, uh, January 3rd. And then House of Blues Dallas, Saturday, January 4th. Tickets on sale now. MXPX.com for tickets. All right. Much love. Would, would love to see you out there live. Let me know what's up. Live stream. I don't think there's going to be a live stream this Thursday as the podcast just came out. Uh, because we're going to be in L.A. Because the show is this Friday. Uh, we're going to be in L.A. So uh, we'll see you there. All right. Peace out. Shout out to Bob. What's up, Bob? Producer Bob, thanks for doing what you do. All right. Love y'all. It was a little manic, but we got through it, right? All right.